Christmas pass on um, on the Glen Kelly Road. Um, so I would, um, would ask that you um, kind of stand on this side of the yellow line. Um, and um, uh, But we have now come out to the uh, to the dire field. Um, and as um, we were discussing, uh, many of you all will recognize that um, uh, uh, th two hours ago, we were over there on that line looking this way across the, uh, the field. Now we've come over here to be the targets for what we talked about earlier. Um, although by the time um, Robertson's men actually come out of the woods here and swing out into this field, those Union guns um, have been silenced. Uh, but uh, we have now penetrated through the um, uh, through the gap in the line, um, and this fourth line of the assault column, Robertson and Benning, are turning into the flank of the Federals on the north side of the gap. Uh, I'm going to put that map um, uh, down and now turn to to this one, which um, is really more the area to the west. The Union line is down on the very edge of the map. The LaFayette Road is that red line right along um, uh, there. Um, the gap is, um, is, is here. Uh, the Davis's division has been driven out of position. Sheridan's division is being driven off of the horizon where it um, had been fighting. And now the Union troops on the north side of the gap um, are collapsing under this flank attack by Benning um, and by the fact that Robertson is passing to um, their rear now out here in this field. And so now, Robertson has completed um, an almost 90 degree swing from facing west to almost facing north um, as he swings out into um, this field. As he does that, um, he um, and starts to, uh, to go north uh, with the right flank of his um, brigade along the Glen Kelly Road here. Um, the, uh, that will help break the final part of Brannon's division free from its position north of the gap, and Brannon's men, largely fighting a fighting withdrawal, are going to begin to move through those woods um, and off to the northwest in that direction. Um, in this process, um, Josiah Church, the commander of that um, uh, Michigan battery in Connell sector there, um, he had tried to reposition his um, his battery. He'll lose a couple of the guns in the position where the monument is today along Poe Road, but he was able to get guns reoriented facing to the south in this block of woods. But the effectiveness of that artillery fire is limited by the forest and also by the fact that Confederates are passing him um, to the um, to the west. And he'll have to abandon some more of his um, his guns. He gets up to the top of the rise up there with just two of his guns, and will lose one more of them um, as he gets um, gets out of here. But now the um, the gap in the Union line um, has opened, and essentially all of the Union troops on the line south of Kelly Field have been put into a very fluid state being driven or withdrawing off to the west and northwest. And as they turn that way, they are headed towards Chattanooga, except some who are going to find a place to, um, to fight. Um, Robertson's men come out here in this field. Um, as Dave was describing, the, um, this, co this Confederate column has now essentially um, uh, de deployed into a single line. Bushrod Johnson's three brigades have continued west, and they've gone through that block of woods um, that you see across the field there, and they actually get up on that rise where the Dyer Cemetery is, where some of us were with the 7th Indiana Battery um, earlier. The um, Laws Alabama Brigade has moved out here. They were the third line 
They moved out. They're essentially on the right of Bushra Johnson. They move up. Some they are going to be amongst the many Confederates who claim capturing some of those Union guns. They move up onto um, to that rise. The fourth line, Manning and Robertson, have now wheeled to the um, to the right, and Manning has largely been destroyed in driving Connell and Buxton out of this position uh, that we saw with their monuments. And Robertson now is pushing off in that direction. So Longstreet's assault column, the fourth line is Benning, Robertson. The third line is Law's Alabama Brigade under William F. Perry. It's over here. And the first two lines, which Rod Johnson's troops, are over there. So now that column that we had earlier is now only what? A line with at most a second line behind the one division we haven't talked about yet, the fifth line of the assault column, Kershaw's division of two brigades, um, Kershaw's own South Carolinians and Humphreys Mississippians. So in collapsing the Union right, the Confederate line has now been thinned out into essentially a single line. The, um, the fifth Texas, Initially, Orient's more going up the, uh, the road here. A lot of that had to do with dealing with the Federals in their front. But the uh, Fourth Texas and the First Texas um, and the Third Arkansas have gone across this field, and they actually get up on the rise where you see the South Carolina Monument today and the Monument to Battery M First Ohio Light Artillery. Um, that they, they get up um, uh, to, um, to that point when a federal counterattack is suddenly felt. By this thinning out of the Confederate line, is there any immediately available Confederate unit to deal with some, some contingency like this? And there's not. There's going to be Kershaw, but we'll see what uh, they do. But they're not immediately available. They're several hundred yards behind um, this line. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and behind and south. Um, and so it's going to take some time to not only get word to them, but also to reorient. Um, and even though you can describe a Confederate line of Benning, Robert Law, Bushrod, Johnson, there are actually gaps in between. Robertson is basically over here with his four small regiments all by himself. Uh, the only thing in a gap between Robertson and Benning is a small detachment of the 5th um, uh, Texan. And then there's nothing on the left of the Texan unless you want to count some of Law's men, or uh, Robert, Perry's men of Law's Alabama Brigade over here. And they're not connected necessarily to Bushrod Johnson. And a small Union brigade is going to exploit that. Parker's Brigade is going to counterattack, uh, and they are going to drive um, Robertson's Brigade off of that rising ground there, and they're going to drive it back southward into this field. Here. 
itself, which helps collapse the Texans so quickly. Yeah, plus they've gone more than a mile um, and taken casualties. They've got a couple of the units have now lost their um, regimental commanders. Um, and, and one of the units, the regimental commander today, is due from yesterday because the regimental commander of yesterday has become a casualty. So there are all these and factors. Those regimental commanders are captains. Yes, they're <laughs> captains. So there are all these factors. Um, for um, why now, with a small Union brigade counterattacking, uh, Robertson's men now start to um, to come back. Is the 125th Ohio in that? Yes, yes they're so in Harper's oh, okay. Yeah, uh, the position mark is down over there. That was line. Yeah, I can't remember if it's the 64th. It's 64th on the road. Uh, the 65th is up there by. Between the um, uh, South Carolina Monument and um, the Battery M Monument, as we look. Okay. 64th and 65th are always twinned in my head, and I can never remember who's where. Um, now, in many ways, I would have wanted to have uh, gone on out into the uh, into the field to uh, to do this. So, um, so now, envision yourself uh, uh, being amongst those Texans and Arkansans, driven back in the face of Harker's counterattack coming south. Um, and um, um, and being pushed back across this field.